Hello everyone. Uh, so, in this part uh, we are going to discuss about uh, some of the recipes for toddlers uh, from uh, 12 months to 18 months and from 18 months to 24 months. And uh, you know one thing we have to kind of keep in mind that as children grow uh, they understand uh, the independence you know and they start uh, kind of uh, demanding uh, food that they, they would like. You know, uh, so this is kind of a difficult uh, stage, uh, you know, for parents, uh, uh, for mothers, and for children also, because you know they would start uh, kind of demanding that, uh, you know, they would reject certain food, they would like certain food, you know, uh, they would have moods, they would uh, eat sometime, they would not eat sometime. So it's it's kind of a difficult uh, phase for everyone. Uh, what I recommend is that after one year of age, you know, children should eat uh, with the family in a sense that they should sit uh, on the table or wherever, uh, you know, wherever they are sitting for their meals, uh, they all should have their own plate. Uh, children should not be feeding from mother's plate. Uh, this is what I recommend. Uh, they should uh, see how other people eat. You know, uh, I try not to kind of force feed the child, let child kind of uh, eat on their own or in on his own or on her own and uh, you know just encourage that uh, behavior. Uh, another thing is that you know they look at how people eat. So, uh, if people are eating you know everything from the pot say uh, roti, sabji, uh, chawal, dal whatever that you have prepared you know whatever that you have prepared for home you know I recommend that you give same food to children ok. Do not make special food, uh, do not get into that habit of providing special food to children. Uh, so that one thing that I want you to keep in mind. Uh, another thing is that uh, you know many times as I mentioned in my previous part also that they may not want to kind of uh, eat you know. Uh, uh, Many times they would well like you know they would throw tantrums, uh, they would just not eat and that would create lot of uh, anxiety in mothers actually you know. So do not worry too much, uh, do not try to substitute kind of encourage them to eat uh, from family food whatever that they have, you have prepared. You can now start adding salt, I still do not recommend sugar and jaggery uh, you know those are empty calories and you do not want to kind of create that uh, taste part which is kind of very uh, you know sensitive to sweet food. So I do recommend not to add any of the sweet food. I also do not recommend to add uh, purees, uh, fruit purees in uh, regular food. You know give them uh, fruit maybe after the meal just maybe one or half a fruit after the meal as a dessert just one probably just one time not not I do not recommend giving too many fruits at with every meals you know. But uh, avoid it to kind of make a puree and add it in children's food because that would make the uh, food very sweet and they, then they tend to become picky eaters. So that is one of the way to avoid picky eating. Uh, one more thing which I also recommend is that uh, when children suppose uh, do not eat there on their own say they, they had few bites and they did not finish their food. So I do recommend that mothers should basically patiently feed uh, children with their hand uh, after they are finished eating on their own. Uh, I do not kind of recommend and I do see it in lot of uh, tribals that you know they give some food in children's mouth or children's hand and then they leave them alone and then children eat little bit and then you know they are they are just playing. Uh, I do not recommend that. I do recommend that let children eat on their own but if they do not finish it then uh, slowly mother can try to feed. If children do not want to eat then do not force feed. But we try to finish as you know at least the uh, requirement uh, for that age group. And suppose for example for a 1 year old they required about uh, 250 grams uh, of cooked meal 5 times a day. So if they do not finish it in 5 times you can give it even in 6 or 7 times there should not be problem. But I try to uh, again you know nutrient density is more important. So if you are giving say 1 egg uh, that 1 egg will be will give lot of nutrients good amount of 6 to 7 grams of protein uh, you know lot of uh, vitamins and other minerals and all. So if you know you cannot compare that to uh, chawal and rice or chawal and dal you know which are what dals are generally very watery. So you cannot compare those you know. So I do recommend if children are eating lot more nutrient dense food like if suppose children are eating say good amount of rajma with little bit of uh, chawal or some millet you 
know that is a good substantial meal, you know then you do not have to chase them within an hour or two that okay now eat something else, you know. Uh, so, it all depends upon what kind of food child has eaten for the meal. Uh, again, you know encourage children to eat on their own, uh, no, uh, no sugar, no jaggery, salt is fine, salt is fine to taste and variety of food, uh, make different recipes, you know, for the whole family, not just for a child. Uh, we have created, uh, you know, recipes in the form of, uh, you know, uh, millet dosas and tikkis and, you know, we have used very nutrient dense uh, uh, ingredient for these recipes. So, you try it, you know, let children uh, have a finger foods also, so finger foods also very important at this age. Make sure that you do not puree your food, okay? Because when you puree your food, uh, these children they don't learn to bite, okay? So now uh, by eight, seven and a half, eight months of age, they should learn to chew the food. And after one year of age, it should be absolutely table food. Uh, I don't recommend absolutely uh, puring any food because we do see many many children even at the age of 3 years 4 years they continue to eat uh, you know pureed food and then then we have to kind of uh, you know uh, unlearn them make them unlearn about uh, you know how to just gulp down the pureed food and how to chew so that's a very difficult cases that we have seen uh, actually in us we see a lot uh, but over india also i see, i do see a lot of cases who uh, come with you know uh, older children just eating pureed food okay so enjoy all these uh, recipes try when adults can have those recipes is not necessarily meant only for 1 to 2 year of age uh, so enjoy and thank you bye welcome to the spoken tutorial on vegetarian recipes for 12 to 18 month old babies in this tutorial we will learn to prepare a few nutrient rich vegetarian recipes babies after 1 year of age grow steadily their nutrient requirements increase with age. To meet these requirements, a variety of nutrient dense food should be given. They require around 1010 kilocalories per day. The amount of food a baby needs depends on their activity and growth pattern. More about complementary food has been explained in another tutorial. Please visit our website for these tutorials. Now let us see the preparation of some vegetarian recipes. Our first recipe is Barnyard Millet Uttapam. To make this recipe you will need 2 tablespoons of Barnyard Millet, 1 tablespoon of black gram, 2 tablespoons of grated carrot, 1 fourth chopped tomato and 3 teaspoons roasted sesame seeds. I will use 1 and a half teaspoon of the seeds for 1 uttapam. This recipe will make 2 uttapams. You will also need a pinch of salt and 1 teaspoon ghee. Procedure Wash and soak barnyard millet and black gram together for 8 hours. Later, grind them into a smooth thick paste. Do not make the paste watery. Transfer this into a bowl and leave to ferment for 7 to 8 hours in a warm place. Once the batter is fermented, add carrot, tomato and salt. Mix everything well. Now, heat ghee in a pan and pour a spoonful of the batter and spread it evenly. Once the uttapam is partially cooked, add 1 and half teaspoon of sesame seeds over it. Cover with a lid and cook again for 3 to 4 minutes. Barnyard millet uttapam is ready. If barnyard millet is not available, you can use finger millet or sorghum. Kodo millet or little millet can also be used. The second recipe is foxtail millet khichdi. To make this recipe, you will need 1 tablespoon green gram sprouts, 2 tablespoons of foxtail millet, 1 tablespoon of chopped onion, 1 tablespoon chopped tomato and 2 to 3 finely chopped cauliflower florets. You will also need half teaspoon crushed black pepper, pinch of turmeric powder, half teaspoon carom seeds, a pinch of salt and 1 teaspoon ghee. 
First, I will tell you the procedure for sprouting. Soak green gram overnight. Next day, strain and tie them in a muslin cloth. Leave it in a warm place for 6 to 8 hours or until sprouts appear. Keep the sprouts aside for later use. Simultaneously, wash and then soak foxtail millet for 8 to 10 hours. Heat ghee in a pressure cooker. Add carom seeds and saute for a few minutes. To this add onions and saute until they turn light brown in color. Next add cauliflower and chopped tomato. Saute them for 2 to 3 minutes. To this add the soaked foxtail millet and sprouted green gram. Mix well. Add salt, spices and 1 cup water. Pressure cook this for 3 to 4 whistles on a medium flame. Allow the pressure to be released and transfer the khichdi into a bowl. Foxtail millet khichdi is ready. If foxtail millet is not available, you can use kodo millet or little millet. Barnyard millet can also be used. The next recipe is green peas and paneer cutlet. To make this recipe, you will need half cup green peas, half cup crumbled paneer, 1 tablespoon roasted Bengal gram flour, 2 tablespoons grated beetroot and 2 tablespoons grated carrot. You will also need 1 4 teaspoon cumin powder, 1 4 teaspoon coriander powder, a pinch of salt and 1 teaspoon ghee. Procedure Steam the green peas in a steamer for 6 to 10 minutes. Allow the peas to cool. Grind the paneer and peas into a coarse mixture. Take out the mixture in a bowl. To this add gram flour, beetroot, carrot, spices and salt. Mix everything well. Divide the mixture and make 4 cutlets out of it. Heat ghee in a pan and fry the cutlets on both sides until they turn light brown. Green peas and paneer cutlets are ready. The fourth recipe that we will see is mixed sprout stir fry. To make this recipe, you will need 2 tablespoons green gram sprouts, 2 tablespoons of moth bean sprouts, 2 tablespoons Bengal gram sprouts, 1 tablespoon freshly grated coconut, 1 fourth chopped onion, and 1 fourth chopped tomato. You will also need 1 fourth teaspoon cumin seeds, half teaspoon turmeric powder, 1 fourth teaspoon cumin powder, 1 fourth teaspoon coriander seed powder, a pinch of salt and 1 teaspoon ghee. The procedure for sprouting has been explained earlier in this tutorial. Please follow the same method. Note that different ingredients take different time to sprout. Hence, soak the three different beans separately. Let us proceed. Pressure cook the sprouts for three whistles. Allow the steam to release and then open the lid of the cooker. Heat ghee in a pan. Add cumin seeds and saute them well. Now add the onions and saute till they turn golden brown in color. To this, add tomato and cook till it turns soft. Add the cooked sprouts, salt and spices and let it cook for 5 minutes. Lastly, add coconut and mix well. Mixed sprout stir fry is ready. All these recipes are rich in protein, magnesium, calcium and good fats. Include these recipes in your baby's daily diet for good health. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Welcome to the spoken tutorial on non-vegetarian recipes for 12 to 18 month old babies. In this tutorial, we will learn about energy requirements for 12 to 18 month old babies, preparation of some recipes. Babies after 1 year of age grow steadily. 
their nutrient requirements increase with age. To meet these requirements, a variety of nutrient-dense food should be given. They require around 1010 kilocalories from complementary food in a day. One cup of food should be given five times a day. This can be given as three main meals and two snacks. Note that one cup is about 250 milliliters or 16 tablespoons of food. Always remember that freshly cooked homemade food is the best for the baby. If baby food is to be stored, please watch our tutorial on safe storage. Please visit our website for more details. More about complementary food has been explained in another tutorial. Please visit our website for these tutorials. Let us start with the recipes. Our first recipe is Butter Garlic Prawns. Ingredients needed to make this recipe are 80 grams prawns, 1 tablespoon chopped garlic, 2 tablespoon of chopped coriander leaves, half a lemon, 1 fourth teaspoon black pepper powder, 1 tablespoon butter, salt to taste. First, clean and wash the prawns properly. Remove the head and tail of the prawns. Use a knife to carefully make a small slit along the back of the prawns. Then, pull out the vein with the tip of the knife or your fingers and discard it. Do this on the other side as well. Heat some butter in a pan. Add chopped garlic and sauté it for a minute. Then add the cleaned prawns in it and cook it on a low flame. Add salt, black pepper powder and mix well. Sprinkle lemon juice on top and garnish with coriander leaves. Butter garlic prawns are ready. The next recipe is stuffed eggs. To make this recipe, you will need 2 boiled eggs, 1 tablespoon thick curd, 1 tablespoon chopped capsicum, 1 tablespoon chopped carrot, half teaspoon black pepper powder, salt to taste. Procedure Cut the boiled eggs into half. Separate out the egg yolks and transfer them in a bowl. Add thick curd, vegetables, salt and black pepper powder to it. You can also add any other spices based on the child's preferences. Mix everything well and mash the egg yolks with a spoon or clean hands. Add the mixture back on the boiled egg whites. Decorate it in unique ways and serve the baby. Our third recipe is Dried Sardines Masala. To make this recipe, you can use any locally available dried fish. I will be using dried sardines. Ingredients required are 20 grams of dried sardines, half onion, half tomato, 2 to 3 cloves of garlic, 4 to 5 curry leaves, 1 kokum or tamarind without seeds. Spices required are 1 fourth teaspoon turmeric powder, 1 fourth teaspoon red chilli powder, 1 fourth teaspoon coriander powder. Procedure Clean the dried fish by removing its head and tip of the tail. Soak them in water for 30 minutes. Wash them well to remove excess salt and dirt. Then drain out the excess water. Heat oil in a pan and add chopped garlic and curry leaves. Add the chopped onions and saute until it is light pink. 
Then add the tomatoes, kokum and spices. Mix well and saute it for 1 to 2 minutes. To this add the cleaned sardines. You can add 1 to 2 tablespoons of water and cook on low flame for a few minutes. Dried sardines masala is ready. Our last recipe is mutton porridge. Ingredients required to make this recipe are 100 grams boneless meat, 1 tablespoon of little millet, half cup of mixed pulses, 1 sliced onion, 1 teaspoon ginger garlic paste, handful of coriander leaves, half a lemon. Spices needed are half teaspoon turmeric powder, half teaspoon cumin powder, half teaspoon coriander powder, one fourth teaspoon garam masala. Take salt according to taste and one tablespoon of oil or ghee. Procedure Wash and soak the pulses for six to eight hours. Similarly, in a separate bowl, soak little millet. Wash and clean the mutton pieces. Apply ginger garlic paste to it. Keep it aside for 20 to 30 minutes. Heat oil or ghee in the pressure cooker. To this add sliced onions and saute it until they turn light golden. Add the pulses and little millet to it. Add mutton pieces and all the spices. Mix everything well. Add one glass of water and pressure cook it for 15 to 20 minutes. Cook on high flame until you hear one whistle. After one whistle, turn the heat to low and cook for 10 to 15 minutes. Let the pressure release on its own and then open the lid. Transfer the porridge in a bowl. Using a spoon, remove the mutton pieces from it. After the pieces cool down, shred them with clean hands. Then put it back in the porridge. Sprinkle lemon juice and garnish with coriander leaves. Mutton porridge is ready. All these recipes are excellent sources of protein, iron, choline and zinc. It is also rich in vitamin B12, vitamin D, folate, potassium and magnesium. Include all these recipes in the baby's diet for good health. This brings us to the end of the tutorial. Thanks for joining.